is presented by Built for Tough. Goal Zero, Mercury, Lund Boats, St. Croix, Lawrence, Gary Yamamoto Custom Baits, Lake Powell Resorts and Marinas, River to Sea, Sackle Warehouse, and Never Slip Bait Tape. I'm Jared Edwards, welcome to the show. Today we're in Southern California, Candy Lake to be exact, with our good buddy Dan Merchant. Good having you back in the boat today. Cool. Now, Canyon Lake is your home lake, and uh, here we are. It's it's just about summertime, post-spawn conditions for certain, and the lake's about to get trashed out there. The background here soon enough is going to be anything but calm. We're talking jet skiers, right. wakeboarders, you name it, putting out big two- to three-foot waves out there. It makes fishing difficult. But I wanted to highlight a show like this to, to show folks out there, even in some heavy wave conditions caused by boat traffic, these bass can still be caught. Uh, but one thing that you were saying earlier that really excites me is I think so many people are going to go down and want to fish docks all That's year right. long. No doubt docks will fish. But today we're going to be focused on seawalls and riprap. Why is it? Well, hopefully we're going to show how obviously some of that boat traffic um, causing can cause the, the bait fish and so forth to flush out from uh, the sea walls and the docks and so forth. And that's really what we're going to be fishing today. Folks at home that hate going out in the summer, scared of boat traffic, this is the show for you. There's a fog out here, huh? Yeah, it is definitely the morning. Hey, check it out. Worst case scenario? <laughs> <laughs> Worst case scenario, we got about 100 white powder donuts taken. I feel like that dog over there chasing the frisbee. There we go. What you got, buddy? Come here. She's running at me. <laughs> <laughs> right up on the point there. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Oh, man. Get that's that awesome. Crank, huh? these, yeah, these fish get so hot, huh? Yeah. No doubt about it. Look at that. It's barely oh, pinned Barely pinned on the back. Yeah. yeah. These guys are just out there boiling on those oh, shad, huh? Barely pinned. That one gave me a bath. Come here. Yep. Come here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a cutie. You know, what's interesting on that is retrieve speed. You know, I think a lot of people um, want to crank super fast out there, right. even over some of the structure. One thing that I've noticed, Dan, we'll go ahead and put this little guy back in. There we go. See you, baby. I'm just trying to crank right. fast enough that this bait is ticking the top of the rocks and the trees. Right. That's it, you know? and. I know there's gonna be times when it's gonna be different, obviously, when you get a lot higher of water, you know? You got a lot less structure, you can crank pretty quick. But right now, being able to take this bait, they call these square bills for a reason, coffin bill, right? It's right. made literally to deflect off of the structure. So having that opportunity to bounce that slowly along the rocks, to me, that's key today because some of these fish slowly reeling and then bam, right. you know, deflecting out the cover. What are your thoughts, fast or slow, on retrieval speed? Well, you know, Jared, a lot of folks, they obviously grab this bait and they just want to burn it across, you know, thinking that maybe they can get a little bit deeper and so sure. forth. And really, the, the square bill's not designed for that. Gotcha. And, you know, it's a little slow, steady retreat to bounce off that structure like you are talking about. No doubt. Shallow cover, be able to just slowly rip it right across some of these structure. And today, no doubt, these large trunk rocks, size of basketball and above, right. definitely the key to our success. I know we've been cranking them. Let's take a look at what we got here. We'll see here. On the crankbait? On that jerkbait. Just put that jerk on. Man, that thing He's is pulling, it. huh? Yeah, that's a nice fish. And that stain water. Come on up here, buddy. He's trying, to, he's trying to get Still me pretty. wet, huh? There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch that. Watch them hook. All right, now you're going to come on. We're going to have to be nice to Uncle Jay here. No doubt about it. Well, that's a nice fish. Boy, I mean, you didn't get one or two Yeah, no, one or two cranks on that fish, Yeah, huh? no, I hit the water. It was right on it. I mean, I got one jerk, and it, uh, it, it got busy. He was all business, yeah, huh? Yeah, he was all business. Two jerks into it. Man, that's interesting. Loaded it up quick. Well, we'll go ahead and put that fish back in. 
Now, yeah. would you say that's pretty typical canyon fish right there? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's about the average. We're gonna get, you know, there's some bigger, much bigger ones than that, but yeah, yeah that's about our average fish right now. Yeah, it's a nice two, two and a quarter. Beautiful fish, huh? Yeah, really good. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and put her back in, huh? I got it. See ya, baby. Coming to say hello. Got one. There he is. What do you got, buddy? Man, that thing, he is oh, hot, yeah. huh? <laughs> with the, with this cloud on. cover and stuff, it's getting them out. They're coming out from the side of these docks in yeah, this dude. open water. And then he, uh, he pretty much got with it out here. With I, open stuff. I tell you, you have convinced me to put on a jerk bait now. <laughs> I've been yeah. cranking. You know, we had a pretty decent crank bite earlier. Right. But uh, basically now it's all about this cloud cover. You know, it's intermediate. Some of the right. sun's coming in coming out we get some of these sporadic clouds and you know Dan, I think that's interesting because one thing we were talking about right before you caught this fish is sometimes a lot of folks will see docks right. and uh, they just want to fish docks all the time that's but right. sometimes that could be a mistake with the clouds why is that well you know it's Jared obviously when I cast it up to that dock as I continued to work that bait out a little bit it was, it was quite a ways away from it but I believe these fish again like I said they pulled off these docks quite a bit so this was an open water fish there's no doubt about it I mean here we are it's beautiful afternoon. Let me go ahead and put this little guy back. Yeah. That thing's hot, huh? Yeah, he's hot. <laughs> you know, here it is a beautiful afternoon. And, and again, so many folks, myself included, I come here and say, look at all these docks. They have to be on these docks. Mm -hmm. No doubt there's definitely dock fish, but from what you're stating, there's many times more than not that when this cloud cover comes in, these fish will get out from the shade of the docks and come That's on right. out and feed. Especially with the cloud cover. I mean, we'll, we'll see as these clouds continue and the sun gets behind them clouds. I mean, it sort of tricks them, you know, they don't know whether they're in the docks or whatever, so that it bet. pulls them out. So. Yeah, no, that's a great tip, you know, several several yards of structure here. Right. Let's keep fishing. You got it. There he is. Oh, nice one. He just ripped. <laughs> You know what's crazy is, oh, oh man. man, these fish are, you know what's crazy is these fish, they just come in so hot on this, you know, there's so many shad out here. Mm -hmm. And here we are, we're just switching around. I decided to throw a gill color, right? Yep. I just want to break it up a little bit, you know. What's your thoughts on color out here? I mean, you know, like you said, <clears throat> is it for the there's so much shad, I think just a little bit different appetite, give them a little bit different offering. You bet. And we know there's a ton of gills out here, right? Yeah, we've seen the gill. The win win. Yeah. This is a little guy. See ya, baby. Here's my take on it. Some of these fish are sitting down the bass, of course, their eyes on top of the head, like most predator fish. Here's where things get interesting to me. These guys are sitting down there. Here's this bait silhouetted by the sun. So a side profile, if these guys are under the dock, they can see the actual color, which this one happens to be the little bluegill mm -hmm. color, right? And they come out and eat it. But many times, I think with so many of these fish back in these pockets actually chasing shad, you know, they're looking up, and again, looking up towards the sun up here, it's gonna be bright. So more, more times than not, the bait's gonna be silhouette. So I think when trying to match more of a bluegill type color, anytime, especially on the bottom of the, the breastplate moving forward, anytime you can have an amber color, a little bit of a yellow, uh, I think that's important. Sometimes I found that when the chartreuse bite dies off on the bottom of crankbaits, switching something up in between, a subtle color, really helped match the hatch, which in today's case, shad as well as bluegills. What's your thought on color? Yeah, I agree. I mean, like you said, a lot of times, uh, us as anglers, we look at the sides, and we even look at the tops a lot of times. No and doubt. like to your point, the silhouette, um, the girth of the thing, as well as just obviously the colors on the bottom, uh, whether it be white, chartreuse, gold, that type of stuff. I think that a lot of times we get wrapped up in all the all the sides. The fanciness on the sides, which no doubt could be great in super shallow water. Absolutely. But I think today they're coming up and attacking. That's right. You know, and no doubt they're coming in hot. They're coming in. No doubt. Blue gold color, gotta love it. Awesome. Oh god, I got smacked, dude. Eat you? Yeah. The line is woof. Yeah, you take it though. There he goes, got him. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he came back at it. He came time. back at it, huh? There so he goes. He here comes, here he goes. <laughs> Man, these fish are powerful. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, look at that guy moving around. That uh, is awesome. 
Just now on the back hook. Man, those yeah. baits are so yeah. much fun, aren't they? He hit it, he hit it and came right back for it. Yeah, and you know what's interesting, seeing where this guy's pinned at. Come back. Right up the that. nose. Open that. Ready to get it yeah. right in the nose, huh? Right at front, you know? Yeah. And it's interesting when you take a look at this because a lot of times these fish, here's his bait dancing, right? Mm -hmm. He comes right up from what I've seen on, that's the beauty of having underwater divers, right? Yeah. It's awesome. These fish will come up and they actually headbutt it many times right in the head to stun it. Then they turn around and eat it. That's why so many times we'll accidentally pin the fish up top. Mm. Well, like that was a one in a million cast. Yeah. He's just coming up to kill it, huh? That's right. Man, look at that. Another healthy, chunky two pounder. Yeah. Not long hair, but definitely big, yeah, huh? That's right. No, awesome. he definitely hit it. He, he hit it once and came back and got it the second time. <laughs> he was making no mistake. See ya, baby. They're a night day, they crank me, didn't they? Right here. There he is. You got him? What you got? Oh, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> that fish is oh, hot, huh? He's hot, huh? Yeah. Let me get this. We were just line, talking yeah. about yeah. the crank, huh? Yeah, we sure were. And those square bills. That bouncing that right off of those rocks. Yeah, he just looked like Let's he had Put this motor in reverse. Look at that. That crank bait's yeah, in that fish's throat, throat too, ain't it? huh? I'm trying to get him a little bluegill there. Yeah. Huh? You want me to get him for you? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, look at this. I hey. see that thing. <laughs> that thing <laughs> he just annihilated that square bill. Look at this. Look at you this, grab man. these pliers here. Look, look at that. that. Good grief. He just. Boy, that's a nice sized fish, uh -huh. huh? Thick. What'd you do? Pitch right up underneath that dock, or what? Uh, I tell you what, I was just running. See these little trees right here? On the, yeah. And this uh, this little chunk rock in there. And Absolutely. No doubt that fish came right through and yeah, he, uh, killed it. He definitely wanted it. Yeah, these fish that. are so hot, huh? <laughs> That's just a good time. I haven't got a real good crank pattern for a long time. Man, look at that. Wow. <laughs> the crankbait pattern, you know, like you're talking about, a little bit deeper, All get right. up here and stay parallel, and be able to crank on some of these rocks. No doubt. Wow. Nice, nice, some nice results, huh? Nice fish. Yeah, that's beautiful. But the whole thing was making consistent cover with that bait. Right. Hitting that stop, pause, hitting it, it letting went. it float up, and bam. There she goes. Let's put her out. Yeah, that's a nice See looking a fish baby. right there. He just changed his mind. He he decided he would like a crawdad. Oh, there it is. Got him. Man, that fish was up there schooling, huh? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are you serious? No way, Let dude. Let me go ahead and pull this in. <laughs> are you oh, kidding me, goodness. dude? Oh, my God. Here Can I get I... this one in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God, dude. Let's just watch what's going to happen yeah, right this, here. There's a lot of trees and stuff down here. Wow, look at the size of that. He had a buddy with him, too. Yep. Here I am pitching this jig back here, and you keep telling me. It's a jerk bait bite. What are you doing <laughs> throwing a jig? Look we, at this. We saw the busters up in here. They were busting earlier. Ready? Oh man, the question is, are, is she ready, yeah, huh? Uh, there's some trees down here, so we gotta be sort of careful. Goodness, look at that. All right, how am I gonna get her without a uh, face full of trebles? All right, come on back. Hopefully she's uh, ready right about now, huh? You got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. That is a beautiful bass. <laughs> I tell you what, my friend. <laughs> this is what Southern Cal fishing is all about, huh? Uh -huh. Take a look at that. That is awesome. All right, here's what I promised to you. I'm going to pick up the jerk bait and throw it. Yeah? And try to catch those fish. Look at that. What a beauty. That's, yeah, that's a, good a good five one. and a half pound fish any day of the week, huh? That's a good one. I mean, we saw it busting back there just a minute yeah, ago. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, that's, yeah, that that's one's good. what it's all about, huh? Yeah. Man, jerk baits, Southern California. Dan Merchant teaches us how to catch the big ones. That's awesome, my friend. Let's go ahead and put her back in. What a beauty.
Last Chance Performance Marine is a certified Lund dealer as well as Platinum for Mercury Marine for engines as well as parts. Now when you're talking about the Lund brand, you're talking about the premier aluminum line going out there from history, pride, craftsmanship, fishability, and most importantly, resale, Last Chance Performance Marine has you covered. If you're talking about repowering, you're talking about adding a variety of bling to your boat, rather that's new trolling motors, graphs, recarpets, Regardless of the brand of your boat, Last Chance Performance Marine has you covered. For more information or to schedule an appointment today, simply visit us online at www.lastchanceperformancemarine.com. I'm Jared Edwards, and we'll see you on the water. This segment brought to you by Tackle Warehouse, guaranteed lowest prices. Canyon Lake, what can I say? This place is an absolute blast, no doubt loaded with some giants. Uh, fishing with great buddy today, Dan Mergent. Uh, he definitely knows this lake inside and out. And catching him on reaction baits, I tell you, it doesn't get much better than that. You know, today we went ahead and started off in the morning and it became so successful I didn't even change baits all day um, with a square bill. Now, there's a lot of square bills really been taking the market strong lately. And today's bait is no exception. Now, this is a bait designed by Bassmaster and FLW Touring Pro Ish Monroe. And it's called the Biggie series of crankbaits. Uh, the company that manufactures it is River to Sea. And this bluegill color here is pretty unique. Now, unlike a lot of the square bills out there that have the same back and forth action, um, the one thing I can say about this Biggie series of crankbait is literally that this bait swims. In the water, this thing looks just beautiful going through the water column and no doubt gets a lot of bites. Now, one thing we did to kind of enhance this bait is we went ahead today and we chose the silent version. The same bait comes available with rattles or you can choose a silent version. And today we chose the silent. Now I did that because doing underwater tests and have our divers under the water, it's amazing sometimes how loud hooks can be. Now, when you couple hooks with rattles, you have an extremely loud bait. So the more silent, natural of approach, even in stained water like we're at today, many a times the bass will have zero problems being able to hone in on the bait and destroy it. Now, we went ahead and switched out some of these hooks to Mustad size six, the KVD version. And let me tell you what, take a look at that grip. When those fish bit, no doubt they were choking that bait deep today and that hook will simply not let them escape. All in all today, a fantastic time, but getting bit was all about bouncing this bait off seawalls, back of the docks, or large chunk rock that was hanging off of those seawalls. Making contact was no doubt the key to success. Now we switched on over to a St. Croix seven foot medium. Now the medium series of crankbait in the seven foot is gonna allow you, the angler, to be able to make some nice, long, precise casts, but most importantly, the medium power is gonna allow that rod tip to load up just right for reaction bait fishing, for small spinner baits. And most importantly, these little square bills, when those bass bite, many times that soft tip's gonna allow them to inhale that bait a little bit further. And again, bait cast wise, we went ahead and kept a pretty strong drag on there. I always prefer to be able to use my thumb as a drag on a bait caster compared to actually loosen it up where sometimes you'll miss on the hook sets or on your back swings. All in all, choosing the correct tackle today was absolutely critical for a successful day on the water. As always, all the tackle demonstrated on today's show can be found at TackleWarehouse.com. Our good friends at Tackle Warehouse have the guaranteed lowest prices and my personal favorite, free shipping on items over $50. Check them out today. Oh yeah, them are little yeah, chicks. Look mama, at them. Are they? Yeah, they are on oh, mama. You gotta be kidding me. Jumping all around it. Here I am retying. <laughs> the good one? Yeah, I don't know. Can't see him yet. He came up and then he went right back down. Nice. Now he's going under these docks. Oh man, good thing they're floaters, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, let me put this. Oh, here he comes. What do we got, buddy? <laughs> okay. Man. That Come on over. <laughs> smacked it for sure. It's been a lot of fun, and I think the biggest thing is we've been able to hopefully help educate some folks at home that 
<laughs> Look at that guy. Yeah. He's a fighter, you know? Yeah. Help sure. educate a lot of the folks at home, Dan, that. You know, docks aren't the only thing holding fish. You That's know what right. I mean? There's some great, beautiful fish in between the transition areas. And I think, you know, most importantly, that that's yeah. a big thing here is that docks are awesome. Right. But there's so much structure in between. And that's what we really wanted to hit home on today's show. For the most part, that forgotten water. Sometimes it's, it's 10 yards in between, sometimes it's 100 yards in between. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we caught them in many different places. Seawalls, docks, riprap, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Absolutely. We caught them on everything today. Um, you know, we ended up right here in this calm canal, <laughs> right. thankfully, yeah. because of the amount of boat pressure and traffic that was out there, we would get beat up. No doubt that that was a positive by all means, but uh, you know, feeling like you're on Lake Erie here in SoCal is not a good thing. You That's know, for sure. There's no doubt about it. I want to thank you so much thank for you, fishing Jared. with us today, buddy. It's a pleasure. It's always great getting in the boat with the buddy and, uh, you know, going out there and catching some fish. You know, you have a great boat shop. If you folks are ever in Southern California, Hemet, California to be exact, you have Last Chance Performance Marine. Again, you guys carry Lawn, Mercury, and the whole gamut in there. Yep. I sure do want to thank you for, for coming out. I appreciate it. Had a great time. We look forward to doing it again. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, very grateful. We look forward to seeing you right back here next week on Jared Edwards Outdoors. Jared Edwards Outdoors is presented by Built Ford Tough, Gold Hero, Mercury, Lund Boat, St. Croix, Lorenz, Gary Yamamoto Custom Baits, Lake Powell Resorts and Marinas, River to Sea, Tackle Warehouse, and Never Slip Bait Tape.